What's up? I'm Drew Paul Bell, and today what I want to talk about are four steps to help you better present your architecture projects. So the first step in presenting your architecture project is the opening. It's actually what you saw me do just like four seconds ago. The, the opening is when you have to get your very first sentence worked out. What is it that you're going to come up and start the presentation with? Every one of my videos I always begin with saying What's up, I'm Drew Paul Bell. Today, what I want to talk about is blank. It's a little corny when you really think about it, but it's way better than the alternative, which is when someone comes up in their video and then they're like, um, so uh, today uh, we're going to talk about, um, I guess what it's about is this, and they just kind of like ramble on. They just kind of like meander into the topic, meander into the video. There's no clear beginning and is very weak. It's kind of like beginning with a limp handshake and it's, it's a poor way to begin a presentation. So get your first sentence worked out. You might say something like, good afternoon, I'm Drew Paul Bell. Today, oh wait, no, no, that's, that's the video. For, um, for a presentation, for a project, what you might begin off by saying is, good afternoon, I'm Drew Paul Bell. And when I first got to the site, what really struck me about this intersection is Fill in the blank. Root it in your project. Say, um, begin with like the sites or something that initially struck you. And it, it's good to even say something like, what I was initially struck by was this, instead of saying, so I noticed about the site that um, it, it has two, it really seems like it has two fronts because it's on this intersection. I noticed is really pretty weak. Like you, you should notice. Like if you didn't notice something, like that's you know, that's a little bit way less strong than something like saying, "What I was struck by was this." See how that's way more engaging. I want to actually hear what you were struck by. You noticed something. Like you might notice that the sky is blue. I knew that too. Like I don't need to know what you noticed. Instead, you use engaging words. So I'll hear in this opening. There is a lot of things at play, but it can be very condensed to something simple like one or two sentences that establish the firm beginning of your presentation and it clips it, it separates it from whatever, whatever stuff was going on before to say, now I'm presenting. So you have your opening. You say, good afternoon, I'm Drew Paul Bell today. I'm going to keep messing this up, but you're going to say, good afternoon, I'm, say your name, uh, and when I initially went to this site on the corner of Peachtree Street and 14th Street, what, in, what really struck me was the way that the site offers the opportunity to engage with two street fronts. So then you transition into the second stage. In the second stage, this is where you're explaining, what you're really doing is conveying your values and your expectations of the world and the built environment. Now that, sound, that sounds really grandiose, but, um, but bear with me. So when, when you're presenting your projects, jurors are going to be coming in and they're going to be judging your project, but what they're doing is they're not necessarily judging it off of like, this is pretty or that's pretty, that's not, all right, whatever. What, the goal in school is that you're going to learn how to present, how to, how to design buildings. And it's hard to judge the final product, the final product or project. It's a lot easier to judge your process. How did you grow? Did you accomplish what you set out to accomplish? Are you learning in the, in, in the process? So it becomes easier to judge, did he accomplish what he was trying to accomplish? Did she do what she was trying to do? It becomes easier to do that than it is to judge, okay, here's this, little, here's this building, let's look at it for what it has, for what it, what it, what's valuable about it. So what you essentially do in, in your presentations is you give the jurors a measuring stick with which to measure your project. So if you say that you want to let in lots of light, then they're going to judge you against how well you let in a lot of light into your building. But if you say that, look, this is a really hot climate, 
it, we have a problem with overheating nine months of the year, rather than trying to let in a bunch of light, I'm trying to shade the building a lot and try to prevent that while still enabling views. Now they're gonna judge you against that. But see, this all comes back to what do you value? What, do, what are your expectations for the way that the built environment should be? What do you think a building should provide to people? Do you think it should provide views and openness or do you think it should provide privacy and being closed off? That, that's entirely up to you and I've done videos on this before about how you as an architect and as a designer need to have a stance on these kinds of things. What do you expect? What are your values? What's, what's your model of the world look like? So this is what the jurors are going to judge you against on this project. How well did you adhere to your own standards that you set for yourself? Now this requires two things. One, that you actually set standards for yourself. And this is something that starts not the night before, but at the beginning of the semester, at the beginning of the project. Even before that, really. It's, it's kind of a, um, you know, your values are something that are with you every moment of, of your life. So you have to set up your values, understand what they are, grow as a human being to like get that handled, then, right, because it's that easy, <laughs> then uh, when you get into, uh, your, into your project, bring, incorporate that into your project from the beginning. Be clear at the beginning of your process. Um, what is it that you value? Do you value sunlight? Do you value privacy? Um, is it sort of a mixture, something in between? How are you going to play with that balance? How are you going to find the balance? So then, once you have those established in your process, then that's going to help you in your project, in, uh, in your process. And by the way, it really helps if you have diagrams for these ideas. These are great ideas to have diagrams for because they convey visually. Um, it's easy for the jurors to see it and then you're talking about it, but it's also on the boards behind you. So they can see that. They're kind of primed to understand it and they're, they're going to remember. It's there as a reminder for them. You mentioned you wanted privacy, or you mentioned that because this is on a major intersection. You wanted to hold that street corner and you wanted to have something prominent there on the corner. Something like that. You, you show that. You talk about it and it's also shown behind you on your presentation. So then, even after you've said it, they still see it. They still remember, oh yeah, that's why he did that. So, uh, use, use diagrams for these kinds of ideas. The, those are great techniques for establishing these values and communicating them. Then, then what you want to do in your, in your next transition into the third stage, third stage is uh, you're transferring into your responses. Now your responses are going to be reactions to your values. So, so far we have your opening, your values, your responses. Responses are going to be, say you, you might say that you value a strong presence on this major intersection in the middle of Atlanta. How are you going to respond to it? What are you going to do about it? Your values are largely like things that you noticed, things that you were struck by. Your responses are what, what are you going to do about all those things you noticed and were struck by. This is where you start talking about your actual building, your final project. This is where you say things like, and here on the elevation I've indicated, it, in my drawings I've indicated, an elevated, um, an elevated facade here on, the, here on the major corner, and then the building ramps down and is kind of has a sloped profile back to the back corner. Um, this is where you begin to talk about your actual project, but all of these all the moves that you make need to have been rooted in things that need, they need to be response, responsive to something. And then this is going to all go back. This is now being built on your values. So the things that you notice, all the stuff, now everything you do is based on that. You set it up by talking about your values, what you expected it to be, the opportunities that it provided, and then you talk about what you did about it. So now this is, this is kind of the step-by-step -step process to explain your project. And a lot of this happens before you stand up in front of the, in front of the jurors. A lot of this happens in the middle of the semester. Um, you need to bake this into your project 
basically every step of the way. But if you work at it, it's really to me like the easiest way to even go about it. Making things being responsive to something, you have to know what's there, then that can inform what you're going to do next. If you're, if you're not responding to anything, you can just do whatever, then you're going to see paralysis by analysis and you're not going to know what to do. Or you're going to do something just because you want to and then it's going to be kind of an ignorant move because, you know, how egotistic to be like, oh, I'm just going to do this thing and completely disrespect everything that's around it. So, you respond to things in the site, you respond to light, you respond to views, you respond to gravity, your structure has to work, you respond to street life or the lack of street life if you're on like a farm or the middle of, you know, a rural area. Um, there's a million things you can respond to. But it's in setting this up that then the decisions that you made are now more powerful. They now carry a lot more weight and are a lot easier to, they're a lot easier for a juror to accept and digest because you say, and here's the reason why. Okay, so now, this is the, that was the third one, responses. And this is really where you get to talk about your project itself. So we have opening, your values, your responses to those values, and then what you have to transition to is the reactions of the jury and questions. The way that uh, presentations were usually structured when I saw them or when I was a part of it, it's like you kind of stand up in front of your, your stuff and you talk and you do your pitch, and then there's like the question phase where now we're discussing. It's not just me giving a monologue. Now it's, or you, the presenter, giving a monologue. Now it's the presenter and the jury talking about what they did, what happened, and uh, is, is more of a discussion. Now, this is, a, this is a tricky transition because what happens is the person's talking, they're talking, they're talking, they're talking, and then it's like, and that's it. Blop. There's my project. I'm done. Do you have any questions? Don't ever say, do you have any questions, is the most condescending thing to say in situations like that. And I'm guilty of it. I've said it once and it felt weird. Don't, don't do that. Because what it, it, it comes across is very condescending. It's kind of like, I have this great idea. Did, did you not understand something and you need to talk to me, the great uh, mind behind this project? And I think it's, it, it's just awkward. Don't say that. Then, um, the other thing is, when you, when you make that shift, you've been talking for 5, 10, 15 minutes about your project. Your jury has been in spectator mode for 5, 10, 15 minutes. So in the same way that like, I'm sure you see this in like lectures and stuff, somebody's up there giving a lecture for 45 minutes and then they're like, okay, we're going to take questions now. And everybody sits around because no one has a question. Because their minds aren't in the zone of like, thinking critically, thinking of ideas, expressing, and saying stuff. They're in the zone of like sitting back, consuming, watching. So it's going to take them a minute to rev back up and get into like, get out of spectator mode and into the area, into the zone where now they are talking and asking questions and providing value. So understanding that social dynamic what I would recommend is you try this transition where you do it like this. When you're, when you're presenting, hopefully at some point, you have to be paying attention to the, to, to the jurors. One of them is going to have a reaction to something. They might, they might I, saw, I saw a professor complaining that like the bathrooms were so close to the eating areas. Which, you know, we're not going to argue the point about that. But somebody had a reaction to that. They might say, oh, it's like this. Or they might, it might even be as subtle as just like kind of, a, kind of a look on their face. It might be completely nonverbal. But you need to be attuned to them in the same way that you're attuned to the site. You're attuned to your clients. You're attuned to the needs. You're attuned to the climate and the sunlight and all this stuff. You also have to be attuned to jurors and, um, and know what they react to. So remember when they react to something. Keep rolling. Go ahead and keep rolling. Go through your monologue or whatever, but then when you're done, when you've said all that you need to say, don't just stop and drop it there. Be like, okay, that's it. Instead, 
say, finish explaining what you wanted, wanted to finish explaining, and then say, now, when I talked about um, the floor plan, kind of the, the layout of the program, you had a reaction. What was that about? What, what was your concern? See, now what you've done is, they had a thought. Even though they were in spectator mode, they're constantly like paying attention and listening to you, but they had a thought. They probably suppressed it and let you keep going. But what you do is when you, when you ask them that question, you recall that idea that they had, and then they start talking about it. The other good thing is you actually considered their opinion. Right? Think about how, how self-centered you could be sitting up here presenting your work and be like, oh yeah, like, this is my stuff. This is my great ideas. What do you have to add? Right? Or you could, by asking their opinion, by noticing their opinion, it says, number one, you, you actually give a shit about what they think, which you should. Then it says that you value their opinion and you want to hear what they have to say. And it says that you care enough, like, like you cared enough to notice, you cared enough to ask. Right off the bat, that sets up a much better relationship between you and the jury than to say, oh, like, yeah, that's it. This is my project. All right, then you have to actually listen to them. Don't, like, hear what they have to say and then shoot them down. Be like, no, but it's like this. Like, maybe they didn't hear your value. Maybe you reiterate your values. Or they might say something that, um, that you disagree with and you, you may need to, you know, Instead of fighting fire with fire and insinuating a firefight, maybe you say things like, I see your opinion, so you're saying it like this. Okay, see, um, I was valuing more sunlight instead of privacy, but I see what you're saying, and maybe there would be a better way to find a better balance between that. Understand what they're talking about. This all comes back to being attuned to what they value, to their view of the world, and that's a skill you're going to have to have to be a good architect. You're going to have to understand what your clients value. You're going to have to respond to sunlight and views and all kinds of natural forces. This is something that you need to cultivate anyway. And it's going to help you become a better presenter. So with that, I think it would be an easy way, a great way to transition into questions. Um, if you go through your entire project and you don't have any reaction from anybody, then um, Maybe your project was too boring, and in the future you should probably work on doing stuff that is it excites people. You know, you know, you know don't don't be so boring. Be engaging, and that's easier said than done. But you know, you gotta work on it one way or another. So to recap, the four steps are opening, have a strong first sentence so that you begin with a firm hand, like you begin with a firm handshake and not, not literally handshake, but you know what I'm saying? Like don't, don't start off kind of like limp and weak and just meandering into it. Have your firm beginning, even if it's corny, then transition into your values, your expectations, the opportunities that you saw on the site, the things that you expected, that you would expect from a building here. Then move into responses. How did you respond to those opportunities? How did you respond to those values and expectations that you had in, in your proposal? Then, when you're done explaining your proposal and your presentation, notice, have noticed, what the jury reacted to and go back to that. Ask them that. Transition immediately into the discussion phase and use that to smoothly transition through all the different stages of your presentation. So, with all these tips, these uh, four steps, I hope that this helps you become a better presenter of your architecture projects. And I will, I hope this really helps, and I'll talk to you next time.